Hi guys, my name is Victoria and today I'll be your HTML instructor. Today we're going to learn about images and a little bit about styling with CSS. Before we get started, we're going to review the summary questions from the last video. So number one, what is the difference between OL and UL? The OL tag is used for ordered lists and the UL tag is used for unordered lists. Number two, what is the tag used for a list item? The li tag is used for list items. Number three, write the code for a link to your school's website. So here I have the a tag, or the opening a tag, and for href, the href attribute, I've put the URL to my school's website. And lastly, I've put um, the name I want to give the link, which is also just the name of my school. Number four, what is something you should keep in mind when creating links to other web pages you created? So other web pages or your HTML pages, they have to be in the same folder in order for the links to work. Great, so now we're gonna get started on adding images to our um, web page. First, we're gonna start off with the image tag. And the image tag is an empty tag, which means it doesn't have a closing tag. Inside, we have the source attribute, which is the file name and extension of the picture. The file name is here, and the extension is a JPEG. And next, we have the width and the height of the picture in pixels. And lastly, we have alt, or the alternate name for the picture. This is a short description of the picture in Word. So where should the files be located? Although we're putting pictures on our web page, they're actually still stored separate from the page. If the source name is just the name and extension of the image, then the image just sits directly next to the web page, but in the same folder. This is crucial. The image has to be in the same folder as your HTML page. But if you decide to put your image in a folder that's also in the same folder as the HTML page, you also have to specify the name of the folder and a slash before you put the name of the image and its extension. So before we move on, we're going to do a little demonstration so we can get used to putting images on our website. So right now, my image, or my page actually, looks like this. So here I've written, here's a picture I took. So we're going to put an image that I took in the space below. So we're gonna go back to our code and under where I've written this, I'm going to start off with the image tag. And now we have to give the source name. So I'm gonna go back to my folder and see, I've already downloaded my picture and I've given it a name, Diamond Beach, and it's in the same folder as my page, which is my HTML page. So we're gonna go back and we know that this is a JPG file. That's the extension. The extension will be .jpg. So we're gonna type in the name of the file and then the extension. Next, we're gonna give the width and the height. So I know that the picture I took is um, a rectangular picture, a vertical rectangle. So I'm gonna make sure my width is slightly less than my height. So the width I'm going to give 200, or yes, 200 pixels. And the height will be 300 pixels. So lastly, we're gonna give it an alternate name. So I'm just going to name it Diamond Beach, which is also just the name of my file. And then closing bracket. So we're going to save this and go back to our page. We got the image here. So actually you might be wondering what is the purpose of alt? Since we can see that on the page, we don't even see um, the name that we gave it. Well, if we go back, if for some reason 
um, the page can't access the image. So um, let's just say that instead of beach, I just put typo. So now with this name, this image doesn't exist because I named my image Diamond Beach. So in this case, if we go back again, we will see that instead of the picture, we have the alternate name that we gave it. So that's actually the reason that we give it a name. So now we're gonna go back. And images as links. Believe it or not, we can also make images into links. For a normal link, we would specify what word or words we want to show up on the web page. So for this example, we have the URL for Google, and then we just called the link Google. Um, to make an image into a link, it's actually very simple. We just place the image tag containing our image inside the A tag, where the word would usually be. So right now on my page, um, I'll have to go back and fix the typo. <laughs> So right now, I have a link here, Kids for Code, and then the picture. So if I wanted to turn my picture into a link, we're gonna go back to our code, and my link is actually right here, and I've named it Kids for Code. But if I wanted to make the picture into a link, I'm going to actually take this entire line, copy it, and then instead of Kids for Code, I'm going to put the image tag. So now we're gonna go back. And when we click on our image, it takes us to the website. Isn't that cool? Okay, so let's move on. CSS styling. All right, we're gonna learn how to style our web page using CSS. CSS can actually be added in three different ways which is the inline, internal, and external style. Um, for today's lesson, we're gonna learn the internal style, which is um, done inside the style tags on the head section of our page. So right here, we have our style tags, and I've actually already added some, um, since you notice that my web page has a little color in the background, and the title is in the center of the page. So we're gonna learn how to do that. So the internal style sheet, you define your styles in the actual HTML page. So yes, this is our HTML code and we're just going to do the CSS on the same document. And it only applies to that page. Um, so inside the style tags, we're gonna have CSS rules. A CSS rule consists of a CSS selector and one or more properties and their values, which you get to decide. Um, and this statement right here that contains the property and the value is called a declaration. So here we have the declaration syntax. You should have the property, a colon, then the value, and then a semicolon. Um, so first we're going to experiment with the color of the text. So this property is just called color, very simple. And the value is going to be a hex color code or just one of the color constants that brackets offers. So here we have the hex color code for red, but in brackets, you could also just type the word red. So we're gonna go back to our code and I'm going to try to change this heading right here into red. So I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna write red. So now if I go back to our page, the titles turn red. Very simple. Next we're going to do the color behind this text or this is basically just a highlight as you would do in a document. Um, so this property is background color, again, very simple, straightforward names. And the value, again, will be a hex color code or one of the color constants that brackets offers. 
So if I were to go back and I wanted to add a color behind my heading, I'm going to say background color. And then let's say I just want the background to be green. <laughs> I'm going to type green and then go back. We can see that the entire line has been highlighted green. Very simple. Next, the text size, and this, uh, this property is font size. So not text size, it's actually font size, which may be a little confusing. Um, and the value is a number value in pixels. There are also other units, but we'll do that later on. So the font size, actually for H1 through H6, the headings, they actually all have their default sizes. So for H1, actually, the default size is 36 pixels. And um, down here, H3, the default size is actually 24 pixels. So if I actually wanted my text to be a little larger than it already is, I'm going to write font size. And let's just make it 50 pixels. Save that. We're going to go back. So this is the size it is now. And since we've made it bigger, yep, so our title has gotten bigger and that's it, very simple. Um, next we have the font weight. The property is just called font weight. Notice that all of these, like font size, background color, the ones that have multiple words in them, they all are separated by a hyphen, so don't forget that. So for font weight, we have um, number values that we can do. It ranges from 100 to 900, 100 being the lightest and 900 being the boldest. But there are also, um, there are also words that you can use in brackets. So we're gonna go back. The default for H1 is actually bolder. So if I wanted my title to be a little thinner, we're going to use font weight, and then we're going to say maybe 200. Go back. And now we can see the text has gotten significantly lighter. It's thinner, and that's just what font weight is. It controls just how bold you want your text to be. Okay, so lastly, we have font choice, which is just the font of your text. And this property is font family, again, separated by a hyphen. So for the value, we have um, generalized fonts, which includes cursive, fantasy, monospace, sans serif, and serif. And then we have specific fonts like you would see in Google Docs or Microsoft Word, like Arial, Times New Roman, etc. Um, Google Fonts is a great resource for this. So you can access Google Fonts from your browser just by searching it up. And we can see that there are a bunch of fonts here and so many fonts to choose from. So I'm just gonna demonstrate a little how you can use this. We're gonna choose one font. Let's go with, let's go with this one. So we're gonna click on here. And to use this font, we're gonna, do you see right here, this plus and select this style, we're going to click on this. And click on embed. So it's gonna tell you that you have to copy this section of code into the head of your HTML, which we're going to do. So right here under head, I'm just going to paste it at the top, the link, okay? And then we're going to go back and see they have, they've already written the line of code for us, font family and sriracha cursive. So we're actually going to just copy this section and where we want our text to be that font, 
which is the heading again. We're going to paste it here, save it. And now we're going to go back to our page and see what happens. So yeah, we've got this font, which we saw on the website. It's the same font. So yeah, Google Fonts is a very good resource. There are a bunch of fonts you can use. Just remember that when you use it, you have to follow these steps. Go, um, so again, when you get to this site, you're gonna go select this style. Um, and then click on embed. And you're gonna copy this into your head and then this into your CSS rule where you want the font to be this font. So we're gonna go back. So that's it for today's lesson. Here are some review questions. Um, the answers to these questions can be found all throughout the video. So if you're following along, you should easily be able to answer these questions. Um, so that's it for today. Thank you for listening and I'll see you next time.